Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today's watch is a Hamilton Railway Special from 1951. The Hamilton Railway Special Pocket Watch is an iconic timepiece that was designed for railway workers. The watch was known for its accuracy and it was a vital tool for its users to safely and reliably keep track of time. As with the vast majority of railroad approved watches in the 20th century, Time setting mode is engaged only by the use of a hidden lever under the bezel. The Hamilton 992B movement inside this pocket watch is of high quality with 21 jewels and is factory adjusted to keep accurate time in all six positions. My passion is in repairing and restoring vintage watches and I really hope that you enjoy watching my videos. Please consider supporting my channel by hitting the subscribe button so you're alerted for future videos, and don't forget to hit the like button if you feel I've earned it, as this helps the videos gain traction on the platform. I don't know the history behind this one, but the watch is not ticking. Stick with me as I attempt to restore this beautiful piece of timekeeping history to working order. A typical watch style has feet that are soldered to the underside of it. There are screws along the outer edge of the movement that contact the feet to secure the dial. This is a problem. Clearly the balance staff is broken, and this is the most common reason, in addition to old sticky oil, why old pocket watches no longer run. It also appears the hairspring stud is detached from the balance cock. Looks like someone tried to work on this one before. It's always important to let down the remaining power in the mainspring before disassembling the train of wheels. Otherwise, the sudden discharge of energy will surely break something. I'll now proceed with the disassembly beginning with the pallet fork. For those just starting out with this hobby, 16 sized pocket watches are the best platform to learn on because of their modular plate design. However, most tend to gravitate toward the 18 sized full plate movements, thinking the larger size would be less intimidating. But trying to align all the pivots as you lower the single plate is an unreasonable expectation to set for yourself as a beginner. Most 16 sized American pocket watches share the same high level design as this one, so don't think you need to drop hundreds on a railroad grade version either. Thank you. 
I really appreciate how Hamilton combined multiple end stones into a single setting, which definitely speeds things up. This pocket watch is relatively young compared to many of the others I've repaired. As of 1951, which is the year this one was produced, many manufacturers began using a more robust mainspring made from an alloy. Modern white alloy unbreakable mainsprings rarely need replacing, but watches from the early 20th century have carbon steel mainsprings which are very prone to breaking and can appear tired or set after many years. To replace the balance staff, I start by levering off the hairspring at the collet. This balance uses a two-piece double safety roller, so it's time to dust off my trusty Rex roller removal tool. You know, the one that looks like it has angry beaver teeth. The double safety roller design is a common choice for high-end and railroad grade watches. The roller table has two levels, one that contains the impulse jewel and the other that is responsible for the safety action, which serves only to keep the pallet fork from moving when it shouldn't. The classic single roller design is not as resistant to going out of action with a shock. Unlike the riveted balances I've shown on this channel, the balance staff is simply friction fit to the wheel, so it can be gently tapped and pushed out relatively safely. For balances using a friction fit staff, the hub is actually attached to the balance arm rather than it being a part of the staff. In some cases, the hub is a blue color, so it's easily identified. The balance wheel is gently tapped onto the new staff. No riveting is required.
And now, I reinstall the rollers in the same orientation they were before to maintain the original weight distribution. Next, I can verify the balance is still in poise before finally reinstalling the hairspring. Poise is a minimum requirement for a watch to keep accurate time in multiple positions. Since this watch was adjusted to all six, I'd expect the poise of this balance to be pretty good. The mainspring is reinstalled with the help of this vintage Watchcraft mainspring winder. This approach is still relatively new to me, and after having used the winder for a couple of months, I can't say it's easier nor more convenient than manually winding the mainspring into the barrel by hand. One can just as easily ruin a mainspring with one of these in a moment of carelessness, but if done right, the spring won't have the vertical cupping as evident on mainsprings that were wound in by hand. Did I mention I'm new to these?
Each end stone receives a drop of Mobius 9010 before the setting is reinstalled. The pivots without end stones will be oiled after the train of wheels is assembled. With the pivots cleaned and oiled, I now take this opportunity to inspect the performance of the balance. Doing so now helps to rule out potential root causes of any issues I might encounter after reassembly. I use a piece of Rotico to support the winding pinion and sliding clutch in the movement until the stem is in place. A couple dabs of DX grease on the metal to metal contact points helps to ensure a smooth operation with minimal wear. Now the train of wheels can be installed.
I always take a closer look off camera that all pivots are seated properly before tightening down the plates. These movements truly are a work of art. This type of dial is known as a Montgomery dial, sometimes called a Monty dial. It features an outer track with individual minutes numbered from 1 to 60. It's named after Henry Montgomery, general watch inspector for the Santa Fe Railway, who created the design to mitigate mistakes made by railway operators quickly reading the time. For example, in a hasty time check, 16 past the hour can be visually confused with 21 past the hour, a mistake of 5 minutes easily made with an ordinary dial. This was the reported cause of several accidents that was addressed with Montgomery's design. No surprise here, this watch is extremely accurate as it needed to be for railway use. I hope you learned something from this video today, and if not, I hope you at least found it enjoyable. Thanks for fixing watches with me today, and I'll see you in the next one.